Hello everyone. I am Caitlin Abraham and today I'm going to present a lesson from my literature unit. Um, but before, before I do that, I just want to talk about it and explain to you the reason why I feel like the book that I chose is it fit my theme and the lesson that I'm trying to teach. So I need to share my screen. There we go. I put together a PowerPoint so that I can be able to present all of the ideas that I had going through my mind. <laughs> so the book that I chose um, is Exquisite and it was actually recommended to me and I'm so glad that it was because it it fits it fits the theme that I chose so perfectly and it just you could use this book in so many different ways in so many different lessons. It's beautiful. It's beautifully written. It's about a wonderful person. Um, so yes, it's exquisite. Um, the Poetry and Life of Gwendolyn Brooks. And um, basically the book, it, it talks about Gwendolyn Brooks. For those of you who do not know, she was actually the very first African American to win a Pulitzer Prize for her 1949 book, Annie. And um, it just, it talks about her life as a child and how she grew up and the way that she came about to be able to write, how she had to support her bills, and it, al it also explains just how different it was for her being African American and, and writing books and just the way it was portrayed and just she, she was amazing and so talented and I, I just, I loved the book. <laughs> I loved it. And it fits the theme because, um, well, the theme is art as an explore, exploration of self, excuse me. Um, it fits that because this lady, this Miss Brooks, she, that's exactly, exactly what she did. She wrote poems that expressed her life and her feelings, her emotions, and, and just her perception of herself and her perception of the world. And, um, the lessons that I try to incorporate into my whole entire literature unit, um, I try to give students the opportunity to use different art outlets for self-expression. And Gwendolyn Brooks, she sets that example for students to go after their dreams. And she does so through writing poems that were, like I said, based off her own life. Um, so we'll go on to the next page. Um, the standard that I chose, it's a fourth grade standard, and that is um, the grade that I chose to do my literature unit with. I, I love fourth grade. I, will, I hope to teach fourth grade one day. Um, and I was looking at different themes and different um, standards, and this is just I just, this is what I felt would work. Um, so the standard I chose for this particular lesson that I'm going to talk about is a language art standard, and it is to determine a theme of a story, drama, or poem from details in the text and summarize the text. So um, the learning objective and the goal. So this is, the learning objective is to, um, after reading a poem, the student will determine the theme of the poem and represent the theme through painting and drawing. Then the goal is that the student will be able to represent a theme of a poem through artwork. And, you know, so what is a theme? A theme is basically like, what is the author trying to say through a story? What is, and if it's artwork, what is the message that the artwork is giving? And I just felt like, you know, the whole book, it is just beautiful. Like the paintings, the words, it gives perfect examples of artwork. And I really felt that students would be able to use this story as an opportunity to find the theme, to write about it, to talk about it. And well, in this lesson, they will be using um, watercolors and because the book kind of gives off that watercolor look and I just was like, you know what, I, this would be fun for me to do. I know that children would like it too. We'll go on to the next page now. Oh, and the curriculum integration for this lesson. So this lesson, it can be used through the representation with works of visual arts when creating the theme paper that would go in the poem. So 
in my lesson, I'll explain it a little bit better um, when I go into that more. But I want students to, um, you know, after hearing that, hearing the story and looking at the pictures, they are going to create their very own page that they think that would go into the story. And it kind of represents the theme, um, their idea of what the theme is. So in like, as this continues, um, it says it can also be used for the language arts when writing the three to four sentence statement and determining the theme of the poem. So I will have students kind of write like what, what they think the theme is and why, and why they think that their artwork could be included in the book. So the materials that are needed for this lesson um, would be the poem, book, um, exquisite, and then sufficient scanned copies of the poem, poem because I want students to be able to um, look at examples. And then I will also provide a teacher example. Um, but I, I think that if students are able to look at the book itself, they'll be able to find the theme and use a lot of different ideas. And then just submission, sufficient amount of pencils and paper and sufficient amount of pastels, paper brushes, and watercolors. And um, this is just my procedures. I would explain to the class, um, we talk about the theme first and how every story and poem has one. And then I would let the class know that that's what they would be doing today. And then I'd ask, you know, questions like, why do we think the author, what do we think the author was trying to teach the readers through this poem? What do we feel when we're reading this book? And does this story rem remind you of anything? Just to get the students kind of thinking. And then I would pass out all of the materials for the artwork. And um, I would inform the class that they will be creating a page that they feel would go in the poem that depicts the theme and what the author was depicting. Then I would also give them the scanned copies that they can look at. And then I would explain to them that they need to write the three to four written statement sentence um, that explains what the message their artwork is conveying and why they think it would fit into the poem, just like I mentioned earlier. And here is a teacher example. Um, <laughs> I, I like watercolor. I'm not the most artistic person in the whole world, but I have, through this class, I have learned that it's actually fun and I'm not, you know, as terrible as I thought I was. <laughs> so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I'm going to kind of give you an example of how I would teach this lesson to the classroom. Let me set this up. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me while I get set up. So first, of course, what I would do is to read the book Exquisite. Um, I actually would have introduced this in an earlier lesson, but I would probably read the book again to the class just so it's fresh in their minds. So I'd go over the title, Exquisite, The Poetry and Life of Gwendolyn Brooks, and ask the class, um, what do they notice about first the title page because it's, it's important like inferencing before you get started reading I've learned how important that is to incorporate that into lessons so after that after going over the title we would read the book and then I will ask the class so guys what is this what does this story remind you of what do you think, what do you think the message is that the author is trying to tell us? I also ask, um, what do you think, what, what are, what do you think you have learned from this story? So we would discuss different, different ideas and construct a theme. However, I want students to come up with their own theme because while there may just be one theme and it can be represented different ways, just I want students to represent it through writing, but I also, because there are just so many different learners, I want them to be able to express it through writing and through their artwork. And I know it's just going to be, it, it'll be different, but it'll also kind of be the same because the theme of this story is to, to be free, to express yourself, to explore, and to go after your dreams. I mean, they all kind of go hand in hand together. <laughs> so 
So I would pass out the materials, which include um, a glass of water, <clears throat> watercolors. I did write pastels, but students can use crayons as well because pastels can be a little more messy. It just, it, it'll depend on, I believe, the students and the classroom setting that we were in at the time. So first, and then I would pass out the scanned copies, and these are pages from the book that I chose, and I think I might go ahead and read them. So Gwendolyn's words drifted into the world like bright, brilliant clouds. Her poems help people better understand others. They encourage people to take a closer look at themselves. They changed the way some people thought and acted. But even two books couldn't pay the bills. Money was tighter than ever, yet everywhere she looked, Gwendolyn saw more stories that needed to be told, so she kept writing. I love that page, and I just love the coloring and the, the, the way that the sky is depicted in this color, and that's why my teacher example kind of tried to do that myself. I think that students, when they see this page, they could, rep they could also um, rep duplicate it, my bad. <laughs> they could also duplicate it. And then another page that I, I found too um, <laughs> would be this one. And I love the colors, the way it's painted. It's just, it's beautiful. And it says, when Gwendolyn turned 11, she decided to set her words free and mailed four prize poems to a newspaper. And this page just represents how, you know, maybe she was afraid to share her work, but when she finally did, she was free. She si finally set them free. And I just think students can learn so much from that because every student in their own way is so talented. And through this lesson, I'm giving students the opportunity to explore that and to express that. So, I would pass out paper that you use um, for watercolor, which, you know, it's a little bit thicker. And um, I would want it to be about this size. So, I mean, possibly I could give students bigger pieces of paper. It just, it really depends. But um, I think this one would work, this size. And when we are all finished, I would um, maybe put them together or display them in the classroom. I feel like this lesson could just go so many different ways. There could be so many more add-ons, but anyways, back to the materials. You need water, you need your watercolors, pastels, paper towels, because you know it gets a little messy and soft, because you do need that um, when you are using watercolors. And so I would instruct the students first to grab a pastel, grab a crayon, and in my example, I'm going to, and I can't really see, there we go, draw like clouds with the, with my um, pastel. So I would show the class how to do all of this and then maybe give some texture for the ground because I'm going to do um, an outdoor theme color, um, an outdoor like page. I like that a lot myself. Now students, they might want to do something more like, you know, with a person in it, just like this page, which they are more than welcome to do. I want students to have the opportunity to express themselves and to just have fun with this assignment. So after um, adding the, the drawings from the pastels, I would then um, just go ahead and wet my brush and get my watercolor all ready. I need to bring this a little bit closer. <laughs> and, and I would just show the students how they can paint their paper using the watercolor. And I, I should have colored in the clouds, but that's okay. Artwork is, can be different. And then you can use different colors, such as purple, to give it that, like, as we see in this, um, in this page, we see how there's just, they, the illustrator used all of these different colors, and that can be mimicked in your work as well, just by adding them and blending them all in. But this is, you know, students, 
it's fun. It's fun to paint and especially watercolor paint. It just comes out so pretty and so light and airy and, and all the color. And it's just, I was when learning how to, um, or watching our lessons in this class, I, like I said, I surprised myself in a lot of ways. And I really have enjoyed just being able to paint and to express myself more in ways other than just writing or taking quizzes. Students, students should be given the same opportunity. I feel like not only will they learn more, but they'll be able to connect and draw their own meanings and I just it's it's wonderful so for the ground I would add a little bit of green some yellow and maybe for like the sun setting you can do a little red up here and just kind of let it all go and like I said students will probably have their very own way of doing this So, what I would give students, take them through the process of doing this, and then, like I said, um, after they paint, I want them to be able to um, write out their statements, describing um, what exactly that they think the theme is, why they ch what they chose to paint why they chose to paint it and how does their artwork um show that theme so you know i would give students copies of like okay so this is what we just did and the here is my example from before and i'd give students a lot of time to work on this and um and then they would write their write their statement and I, I didn't want it to have to be too long because they are representing the theme through painting and i think that i will be able to um, see that and i will use that as an assessment method but as well i would also look at their statements and read them and then like i said i want to be able to share them with the class and talk more about themes and this could just go so many different ways we could we could create a sequel to the life of Gwendolyn Brooks and students could even, I could give them opportunities to create their own poems or in another lesson, I have them um, writing a rap because like, you know, we've learned there are just so many different learning styles and so many different ways to ex express your knowledge and to explore yourself through just so many different avenues. I think that I, I think that this lesson gives students the opportunity to do that and especially art art really does that there's so many just so many ways using art that a student can express themselves i enjoyed putting this lesson together i love love the book exquisite and i will use that that book in my future classrooms i hope that this presentation gave a better understanding of one of my lessons and i i look forward to adding on to it and doing more with it when I actually become a teacher. <laughs> so thank you. Bye-bye.